Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience, and wisdom from thousands of successful individuals from around the world. I'm your host, Ashutosh Garg, and today I'm delighted to welcome a very accomplished professional from Pittsburgh, USA, Mr. Pete Schramm. Pete, welcome to the show. Good morning. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Uh, Pete is uh, the founder and chief executive officer of Latitude, which is an employee connection, survey, and retention platform that promotes engagement through meaningful conversations. Uh, Pete is also an entrepreneur and an author who is passionate about connecting people and guiding diverse teams to tackle complex challenges. And just before we started recording, he was telling me his book is releasing in middle of November. So uh, Pete, good luck with your book. And Pete's been recognized as a Pittsburgh 30 Under 30 awardee. So, Pete, before we talk about latitude, tell me a little bit about your own journey in brief. Yeah, um, pe people changed my life, plain and simple. I grew up on a farm in Western Pennsylvania, and both my parents grew up on farms. And I'm like, hmm, you know what? I love this hard work thing, hmm. but I don't necessarily want to have to do this forever. So what are my other options out there? And I went through and I figured, okay, hey, if I study hard in school, then I could get a good job. Mm -hmm. And that would also make sure my parents weren't pissed at me, right? That's that's another goal that we have to be cognizant of yeah. this whole time. So went through high school and then college. I studied mechanical engineering in college mm -hmm. down in Washington, D.C. And I had a very interesting transition from a public high school to a private high school. Mm -hmm. So very, very, you know, different setting. Um, and it challenged me and it showed me that, what I really care about most in life, obviously bettering the lives of others, but challenge and opportunity. That's what drives me, mm -hmm. right? Challenges of pushing myself out of my comfort zone and opportunities to try new things, do new things, explore mm -hmm. other ways to, to better this world. So I went through college, undergrad, grad school, studied mechanical engineering because I'm like, I don't know what I want to do with my life. Hmm. interesting stat for everybody out there i'm six hmm. foot eight so over two meters wow. okay. um, and got to play basketball and track in college studied abroad in hong kong and then went to work at a big defense contractor upon graduation hmm. absolutely loved it and hmm. that's where i had these different mentors that said hey do this don't do that maybe try this thing out hmm. push yourself out of your comfort zone over here hmm. and then people started calling me they're like, hey, Pete, how'd you get to where you are today? Can we look at, you look at my resume. Can we practice for an interview? You know, this, 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 connect me to this person. And I always said, yes. And then I realized I didn't have enough time to help mm. everybody. And I didn't know all the answers. So what do we do whenever we're faced with a problem? Mm. We find solutions. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you. So let's talk about latitude. Tell me a little bit about what was the inspiration to create latitude and what are some of the core features that make it so unique? Yeah, so that piece of that last bit of the story is that I can't do all this on my own. Mm -hmm. I have a stack of, actually, I brought these out for the, the show. Mm -hmm. Here's a stack of some of the notebooks. There's more than 39 of these things over mm -hmm. there, tracking all the different conversations and everything that's been going on. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, man, how in the world can people keep track of all their conversations they've had mm -hmm. for years and years and years and know mm -hmm. all the different people and what to talk about? So I said, you know what? I'm going to build a solution to solve this problem. And mm -hmm. you know what I did on March 4th, 2018? Mm -hmm. I Googled how to start a business. Mm -hmm. Amazing. <laughs> Any first time entrepreneur. And so what sets it apart? There are, if you Google mentorship software, you'll find some other things out there. What I wanted to do is one, make it simple. Two, make it easy to use and valuable to the person. Mm -hmm. And then three, we had to get some more people on there, right? It's got to be easy to understand, clear benefit, and kind of trendy are the, the triangles that I go for there. So by having the entire mentorship life cycle in one place, along with the data and analytics that we have with it, is what sets it apart. So I understand what I want to talk about and why. Mm -hmm. When I'm available, I have the conversation, the agenda, the notes, the connections with other people. And then again, the analytics and the so what on the other side is what really sets it apart. Wow. And, you know, as a first time entrepreneur, what were some of your biggest challenges you faced while building Latitude? And how did you overcome these? I thought you said we were only talking for 23 minutes. <laughs> we could go for a while on this one. I'm, I'm learning every day. Yeah. Uh, fast forward a couple of years later. The biggest one is I'm a non-technical solopreneur. That's how it started. Mm 
Mm. And so to be building a tech company when you're not necessarily a tech guy, mm. let me let you all in on a little secret. It's not easy. Mm. Mm. <laughs> um, so mm. finding the right people was an important piece. Um, product market fit is a ever you know going journey. And it's something that you know can always get better. Um, but understanding it's okay not to sell to certain people and to focus, focus, focus. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks to some of our uh, in investors and shareholders and mentors for guiding us there. Um, I'd also say that marketing, right? They don't teach you marketing in engineering school. So uh, to, to learn what that is, I've built a you know, presence on LinkedIn. Thanks for the, the, the crew that is uh, growing together. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks, Corey, for being a coach. And it's just being persistent and consistent and making it simple. Mm -hmm. So uh, reminded me the fact that, you know, short and sweet and uh, kiss, right? Keep it simple, yeah. shram, mm -hmm. put it at the end because we have another mm -hmm. S. Yeah. Um, and I'd say the last piece on there is in the sales process, being okay with a no. Mm -hmm. Not It's not everybody's going to buy from you. Mm -hmm. And knowing that you might go, you know, five out of a hundred, that's terrible when you're shooting free throws in the mm -hmm. basketball court, but mm -hmm. that may not be bad in sales. Mm -hmm. What a great response. Thank you. My next question is that in, in the realm of employee engagement, what do you believe is the most common misconception that companies have? For, for this one, it's, I, I did a survey and mm -hmm. my work is done. I check the box. I have a number back of percentage of responses. Mm -hmm. And that'll tell me, okay, I did a survey. I have, you know, 15,000 employees at my company and I got, you know, 8,000 responses. What's that? That's a little bit over half. Okay, mm -hmm. good. So a little bit better than one out of two. And that's where people usually fall short. They don't mm -hmm. necessarily do analysis. What were they, you know, responding? What was the timeline of responses? Who did not respond? Why? Mm -hmm. Can we get those numbers up? And then if there was anything in there of like, here's what should or could happen next after the survey, mm -hmm. did that get done or not? And a lot of people just kind of stop right there. Um, the other piece that can be bad or misconception mm -hmm. is to not share the results mm -hmm. or to not share the necessary results. Um, so transparency, that's something that I talk about a lot um, is saying, hey, we took our temperature and here's what our temperature is. Mm -hmm. But whenever you're like, hey, we took our temperature and instead of like all five things, here's like two things that I'm going to report on. That's where you lose some of that trust and respect and loyalty. Well said. And uh, how do you measure the impact and success of Latitude for your clients? So we actually partnered up with a company called Statra, mm -hmm. and that's where we can understand ROI real mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. So you've been a business person for a while, right? Mm -hmm. Isn't it yep. important to say, hey, I'm going to spend money on this thing. Mm -hmm. I'd like to understand if it's uh, making me money or if it's taking money from me. Everybody can agree on that. Yeah. And so with this capability, we're able to understand a baseline, mm -hmm. right? And then say, okay, are we getting better or are we getting worse? Mm -hmm. Don't take my word for it. Don't take all the research that says investing in our people and professional development and talent development and mentorship and career development mm -hmm. and mapping careers is important. Mm -hmm. See what's going on inside of your organization. Mm -hmm. So the other things that we can look at are what are your retention numbers? What are mm. your first year retention numbers, mm. right? What's the rate at which people get promoted? Another one that I like to see is profitability per individual. Mm -hmm. Is that going up or down? And that, excuse me, we can also ask surveys while the engagement is taking place, mm. right? What do the people think? Is it going well? And I like to ask four questions, particularly whenever we're doing a one-on-one -on -one like this. What should I start doing, stop doing, continue doing, and shift doing? Start, mm. stop, continue, shift. So keep it super simple. Amazing. And um, when you look at all the work that you've been doing with so many different uh, clients, what trends in employee engagement and retention are you foreseeing in the coming years? I think AI is going to continue to be a helper with us. I think it can, you know, work in chatbot capacities. I think it can do a first round and maybe a second round analysis mm -hmm. of what's mm -hmm. happening. 
Um, we're working on some AI work around uh, the career companion aspect with the U.S. Air Force and others, which is pretty exciting. Hmm. Um, I also think that it's going to become more customizable. So if hmm. you're familiar with like a HubSpot or some of those drag and drop to customize your own yeah. dashboard kind of options, hmm. I think um, the the age of employee choice is most definitely here. And we have to continue making it possible for individuals, mm -hmm. um, you know, to, to own their own career. I also think that it's time for the gig worker mm -hmm. to really make a resurgence. You know, yeah. I think there's a lot of organizations that can benefit from, hey, a part time this, a fractional that, uh, you know, just a couple hours a week from 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 this uh, kind of support. And I think we're going to see more and more of that. And it's interesting because I might be, you know, a great fractional chief human resources officer, for mm -hmm. example, right? And I can do my work in five to 10 hours a week for mm -hmm. these companies that are 10 to 100 individuals. Mm -hmm. And if I can do that for three, four or five organizations, and I'm remote three out of four weeks of the month, mm -hmm. that's pretty solid. I can go yeah. and travel. And as we get into these next generations, they care about purpose. They care about passion. They care about work-life balance. They care mm -hmm. about, hey, do I have an opportunity to grow and develop? So I, I think we're going to get more of that. What's going to be interesting is the spin on hybrid versus required in the office. Right. And I'd kind of be curious of your take on that one from kind of a, a global lens. Hmm. And no, no, you're so right. I mean, hybrid uh, and remote work is becoming almost like a norm. The, some of the big companies want to go back to uh, yeah. full-time five-day work in office. But moving on, uh, Pete, how has the technological landscape influenced the development of Latitude? And are there any new technologies or methodologies you're excited about? Yeah, so over the last five years, mm -hmm. a lot has changed, mm -hmm. right? The journey started before covid the journey started before the surgence of, you know, Zoom and Teams and, you know, Blue Jeans was kind of being used. The others were kind of being used, but Skype was something that just big companies had, mm -hmm. you know, or if you were in another country, you would have yeah. to hop on that. Um, you know, chat GPT, you know, GPT-4, meta GPT, mm -hmm. all these things with generative AI are really changing the game. So uh, not this past summer, but the summer before, before the GPT boom, if you will, mm -hmm. um, doing a lot of work with Carnegie Mellon University and the Language Technology Institute um, on our AI inside mm -hmm. of the software. And then what happens, you know, six, seven, eight months later, it's like, oh my gosh, we have to go back to the drawing board. Mm -hmm. And because there's so many more tools that we can use out of our toolbox. Mm -hmm. So I see it as not a, you know, slam dunk home run, the jobs are, the work's already done for you, mm -hmm. but as a easier way to get from zero to 40%, mm -hmm. um, but it's not going to get you a whole hundred percent of the way. Mm. I also think there's other applets that are coming out, mm -hmm. right? As we were coming onto the call, you saw my Fathom note taker uh, that, that tried to join yeah. here. There's a lot on the analytics side, so you can better understand. And I'm also a big fan of how we can asynchronously get work mm -hmm. done. So my mm -hmm. friends are in a company called Latch, and it's about, uh, you know, kind of asynchronously talking and hearing from your people and communicating with them, sharing mm -hmm. the story, working to get that culture piece right. Mm -hmm. uh, but also project management, right? I was, you know, program manager, project manager mm -hmm. uh, for, for years and years. And now it's, okay, how can we save time and do less but better is the mantra. Mm -hmm. Mm. Well said. And um, how does how do you and Latitude cater to different industries or, or different companies with different sizes? Are there any unique challenges for startups as compared to large enterprises? So whenever we're working with organizations, you have to make sure that the leadership is bought in. Mm. You have to make sure that there's a budget. You have to make sure that this is prioritized. There's an article I'm going to put up on LinkedIn soon. I'll tag you in it and everybody can go and, and, and have a look. Yeah. It's about how do we go about mm. an implementation of a software? 
Mm -hmm. right? And a lot of people will just kind of stay up in the glass tower and they're going to do all the planning and they're going to go through um, and and say, this is how it shall be very top down. Mm -hmm. But if you think about the best implementations, right, Mm -hmm. it's kind of top down, bottoms up, and it's a phased process, Mm -hmm. right? So whenever we work with smaller companies, we'll go down, there's clients that are 25, 30, 40, 50 employees. Those aren't as you know, much of an ideal customer profile that we specifically reach out to. Why Mm. is that? Well, usually they don't have a specific individual that uh, can benefit that, that, that can drive this forward internally, right? Mm -hmm. HR is usually under the CFO function or the COO function in those instances. Yeah. Once you get to a hundred, 200 employees, which aligns with Dunbar's number, right? Mm -hmm. The amount of people we can have a relationship with, Mm -hmm. then they have one or two or maybe three people in human resources, Mm -hmm. right? Their ops has an analytics, you know, aspect of it, operation. And so that's, and then everybody doesn't know each other, right? You're in a 15 person company. Mm. You can pick up one of these and say, Hey, you know, Dave, yeah. John, Michael, mm. Mm. help me out with this, right? You can send a DM and people get back to you very quickly. Mm. So where it's been valuable is adding in the survey piece, right? So now we can measure where we are, connection, well-being, trust, and satisfaction, mm. and then recommend different things for you over time, and then have the ongoing connection software. So you know who to talk to, what to discuss, and keep growing together professionally. Wonderful. One more question relating to latitude, and then I want to talk a little bit about your book. Yeah. Um, can you share a success? Can you share a success story of a company? that transformed its employee engagement with the help of Latitude? Yeah, so let's talk about an organization that has locations all across the country, okay? Mm -hmm. And I kid you not, whenever I walked in uh, to do kind of the final demo and conversation with the leadership team, Mm -hmm. somebody pulled me aside in the lobby and they said, hey, sir, I think I know why you're here. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm trying to work hard. I said, why do you think I'm here? <laughs> well, you're here to get rid of a lot of people. Okay. I said, no, I'm here to bring a lot of people together. Mm-hmm. She said, oh my goodness, because uh, a lot of us are scared and they you know, they say, say one thing and do something else. Mm-hmm. And I said, what do you mean? And they're like, well, we've been talking about you know investing in our people for such a long time and, and this employee engagement stuff, but nothing's happening. And I said, that's the guy that I am. Mm. And she said, what? And so her eyes just got big. And so over the last, I guess, year and a half now, right, kind of working with these uh, people and hearing like, hey, my voice is now heard. Mm-hmm. It's just been so, so cool to, mm. to hear those pieces. And what we did with that organization is started off with the survey mm-hmm. and then went into the uh, mentorship program over time. Mm-hmm. And the way we like to go about the mentorship concept is what are you doing during onboarding the mm-hmm. relations side, right? So kind of went from a, hey, we have onboarding and it was the compliance and transactional side to now mm-hmm. a robust um, kind of relational aspect of here's who you talk to mm. whenever you're getting going uh, with that aspect, right? The manager one-on-one process, start, stop, continue, shift, and then succession planning. So all these things that were like, yeah, we kind of do them. Now there's process and structure and rigor. And oh, by the way, the turnover numbers are going down. So mm. we like to see that piece. Um, I'll share a quick other one yep. uh, individual who's working at a large defense contractor. Mm-hmm. He said, Hey, I'm fed up. Let's figure out, Hey, I, I need to get out of here and go somewhere else mm-hmm. was able to connect with others and move over instead of moving out. Mm-hmm. Right. So the, you know, kind of randomized connections of, Hey, topic-based matching, you should talk to this person or mm-hmm. this person because we don't have a, you know, just only one-on-one the way our process is, we bring agile mindset mm. to the people connection process. We do mm. it with our projects and our programs. So why don't mm. we do it with our people as well? Amazing. Pete, now let's talk a little bit about your book. Uh, you've got a book releasing in the middle of November. Tell me about your book and what was your hypothesis when you wrote it? The book is called Pathfinders, mm. Navigating Your Career Map with a Personal Board of Advisors. So Mm -hmm. last year I gave a TED talk Mm -hmm. on the topic of personal board of advisors. Mm -hmm. I had no idea that it was going to be received so well. Mm -hmm. And over the next couple of months, I talked more and more about this concept, Mm -hmm. 
right? This thing of multiple mentors. And now that people are able to, uh, you know, have a, a path to success, right? A roadmap of what mm. we can do. I'll share some artwork with you. I'll share the link so everybody has access to it. Mm. But people told me it was the voice of the customer. Sure, we love what's going on with Latitude. We need the surveys. We need the mentorship stuff. Tell me more about mm. this personal board piece. And what I do is bring together the personal board of advisors, right? Eight to 10 people that are guiding you professionally with your career map. Mm. So now we're able to you know, the old adage of what is it? It's not uh, what you know, but who you know. I say the heck with that. Let's have both, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Find the who, learn the what. Now we have diverse perspectives, multiple different individuals. So mm-hmm. I've presented more than 50 times all around the globe on this topic and people keep asking more questions. I got a stack of papers over here of the feedback mm-hmm. that I keep getting because I'm not, you know, perfect and mm-hmm. I don't have all the answers. So I make sure that I ask like, hey, what else did I miss? What else do you Mm. wish was covered? How Mm. might we make this better together? Mm. Um, So that's what's really fueled this. Good luck luck with your book. Uh, I'm going to ask everyone to look out for your book. I'm going to check it myself. And my last question, Chief Pete, and this is for the many, many people who will listen to our conversation. Based on your amazing journey and your understanding of employee connections, engagement, what would you say are three lessons you would want a lot of our viewers and listeners to take away. Take action. That's the biggest thing. And you mm-hmm. can start off by just asking yourself, hey, w- w- what what does everybody need most mm-hmm. in the organization? But the important thing is to take action. Mm-hmm. And then the second piece is to be persistent and consistent. Mm-hmm. It's not just a one and done. That's mm-hmm. an important piece. And then the third part is be authentic and be real right? Mm -hmm. If it's not all, you know, fine and dandy and things aren't working out very well, you Mm -hmm. did the survey and you got back bad data. Hey, Mm -hmm. that's a starting point. Those are the facts. Mm -hmm. You want to do a second baseline? Okay. I guess you could do something like that. Mm -hmm. But hey, if whenever uh, one of my uh, mentors, advisors, friends, John, he he talks about whenever we expose our warts, Mm -hmm. you know, and share our vulnerability, Mm -hmm. right? It really lets people in and say, hey, look at this. This is amazing what what Mm. he's trying to do. So take action, be persistent and be authentic. Well said. And on that note, and your three wonderful lessons, take action, be persistent and be authentic. Thank you, Pete, for speaking to me about your journey. Thank you. What What an amazingly diverse journey you've had from the farm to an entrepreneurship role and in between did so many professional roles. Thank you for speaking to me about Latitude. I loved what you told me about how a non-tech person is now building a tech platform. Thank you for talking to me about employee engagement. Thank you also for speaking to me about your forthcoming book. Thank you and good luck to you. Thank you for listening to the brand called You Videocast and Podcast, a platform that brings you knowledge, experience and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Just search for the brand called You.